You know how to build muscle strength, but how do you build tendon strength? Today, we're gonna to expose some of the common mistakes that people make when trying to build tendon strength. The real solution is almost too simple to believe, yet almost no one does it right. But first, let me show you the proof that this method actually works. Across many studies, we see that there's something called a loading threshold for truly building tendon strength. That means that light exercises, stretches, and other techniques below this threshold just don't improve tendon strength. Exercises above this threshold can build tendon strength. That threshold is 70% of maximum muscle contraction strength. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, this varies by exercise and position, but here's the general principle. You need to choose exercises and positions that allow you to create a really strong muscle contraction, at least 70% of the force that that muscle is capable of producing. Now you might be saying, okay, great, but what exercises do that? Well, today we're gonna to cover five of my favorites for commonly injured tendons. For each of these exercises, the protocol that I recommend for building tendon strength is three sets of 30 seconds with a challenging isometric muscle contraction, meaning a static hold in that position for 30 seconds. After you complete that 30 second challenging hold, rest for 90 seconds and then repeat. So three sets total, 30 seconds that's what we're gonna use for each exercise. This takes advantage of something called creep where a muscle slowly shortens during that muscle contraction and the tendon slowly lengthens or loses tension. This slow tendon lengthening under load is a great stimulus for collagen synthesis. Okay, now that we understand why, let's dive into the five exercises. Exercise number one is a single leg calf raise isometric. And I think this is a really important exercise for everyone, athletes, runners, older adults, people who want to have a strong calf and not have Achilles tendon pain. But I very often see this exercise done incorrectly or done in a way that doesn't actually stimulate the Achilles tendon enough to actually get stronger. The way that I recommend doing this exercise is with one foot placed on a box and the back foot down on the ground. This is gonna do a couple different things. Number one is it's going to stabilize you while holding a barbell so that you can put a lot of weight through the back foot. This is particularly important for really strong athletes because strong athletes often need hundreds of pounds on their back to really adequately stimulate the tendon and get to that 70% loading threshold. For example, when I tested Lily, it took her 220 pounds to get to that 70% mark. So the main reason that we're doing the calf raise this way is because we can get much more load through the Achilles tendon than with doing something like a single leg calf raise holding a dumbbell or a seated calf raise, where it's just harder to get to enough load for this to be effective. Here are some cues to make sure that you get the most out of this exercise. Set up the barbell with a truly challenging load. You wanna build up to this over time appropriately, but do understand that Achilles tendon ruptures occur with fast movements, not slow controlled isometric contraction. So it is safe to progress yourself to a strong muscle contraction here. Place a box slightly in front of the bar to stabilize the front foot on. Start on your weaker side and keep the foot on the ground. Place the bar on your back just like you would for a back squat and hold a tall posture. Hold a position where your heel is slightly off the ground to activate your calf muscles. Importantly, keep your knee straight. Allowing the knee to bend just a little bit can decrease the load through the Achilles tendon, so be sure to keep an eye out for this common compensation. Once you find the right position, hold that strong muscle contraction for 30 seconds and repeat three times. I recommend that athletes and runners do this exercise three times per week. All right, moving on to exercise number two, we have a leg extension overcoming isometric. This movement is great for targeting the patellar tendon in the front of the knee. Athletes who have a history of jumper's knee or patellar tendon pain will benefit from consistently loading and strengthening that patellar tendon. This is really common in football, basketball, volleyball, and soccer players. When an athlete has patellar tendon pain from jumping and squatting, I like to perform this exercise at the start of their training session to help reduce that pain level. Here are some cues to think about. Set up the leg extension machine not all the way out straight, not all the way bent to 90 degrees, but about halfway in between at that 45 degrees or so of knee flexion. Start on the weaker side, place the weight stack all the way to the bottom, so that way when you kick out into the machine, it won't move no matter how hard you kick with one leg. And then the last step is just getting a strong muscle contraction, about 70% of your maximum potential force production, and then holding that for 30 seconds. 
I like to coach this ramping up for about two seconds and then holding that steady contraction about 70% of your maximum for the rest of the 30 seconds. Again, this is a really great way to build patellar tendon strength. All right, I know what you guys are really thinking. Matt, where'd you get those cool shorts? So, glad you asked. This is a good time to mention our sponsor, 10,000. If you're anything like me, you wait way too long to upgrade your workout gear. The 10,000 interval shorts have been a big upgrade to my workout wardrobe and pretty much my everyday clothes because I really just wear athletic clothes. These shorts are really stretchy and comfortable and the liner makes them really great for running. There's a big liner pocket that you can stick your phone in all the way and it won't move while you're running. Also, importantly, unlike a lot of running shorts, these actually have two big deep front pockets. I can't stand it when running shorts don't have pockets. So these interval shorts are a really great option to have both a liner pocket and the two big front deep pockets. This makes them great to wear in the gym and every day. These interval shorts are already very reasonably priced and a good value. And on top of that, they sent over a discount code. That you can get 20% off with code movement. So big thanks to 10,000 for sponsoring this video and supporting our mission to make the world stronger. If you wanna check out the interval shorts, use the link in our description. Now back to the video. All right, now moving on to number three, which is one of my favorites. And this is the hamstring long lever bridge. This is a movement that helps target the proximal hamstring tendons. This is particularly valuable for athletes with a history of hamstring strain. This can be done daily or prior to each training session. Remember that isometrics don't cause as much fatigue as full range of motion exercises. So these can be incorporated before your training session, after your training session, or even on your off days. I just like to say, find a way to get it done three times per week. Okay, here are some cues for doing this exercise correctly. What you wanna do is bridge up into a glute bridge position, and then you wanna walk your heels out away from your butt. We want the knees to be bent about 45 degrees, meaning the knee angle, if we're looking from the side, would be about 135 degrees. If you're doing this correctly, then you're gonna feel your hamstrings more than the glutes in this position. If you were to bend your knees all the way to 90 degrees, then you would feel more of your glutes working. So to really target that proximal hamstring, we wanna drive the heels straight down into the ground and importantly, maintain alignment between the knees, hips, rib cage, and shoulders. Hold this position for 30 seconds and repeat three times. If you're able to do this double leg long lever glute bridge successfully for 30 seconds three times, then you can progress to a single leg long lever bridge. Same exact position and cues, just with one heel driving down to the ground instead of two. So use the long lever bridge to build strong hamstring tendons. All right, moving on to exercise number four, we have the open can overcoming isometric. This is specific to the bicep tendon. The bicep tendon on the front of the shoulder is a common area of injury. If you are an athlete you're working with has pain in the front of the shoulders with dips, bench press, or reaching behind their back, then this may be a good movement to train. Here are some cues. Stand near a wall and bring the arm forward about 30 degrees in front of the body. Rotate your arm so that way your thumb is facing upward. Now push into the wall with about 70% of your maximum potential force. It's okay if this is a little bit painful to the sensitive area, but I just like to keep the pain level below a four out of 10. Also, make sure that that pain level is returning to baseline after 24 hours. If this exercise or any of these tendon exercises are elevating your pain level for more than 24 hours, then you wanna dial back and push a little bit less. Overall, this exercise done against the wall or holding a dumbbell can be a really good stimulus to build the strength back in that bicep tendon. All right, and the last tendon that we're gonna address is the extensor tendons in the elbow that is responsible for tennis elbow. It's pretty common to get pain in the elbow from sport motions. In order to address this pain, I like to find a long item and work on a motion that's called supination. So if we think about our goal here, our goal is to get the muscles that attach to those tendons to work really hard, around 70% of their maximum force production. Also, we wanna be able to hold that strong muscle contraction for 30 seconds of tension. So the way that tendon can slowly lengthen and start to stimulate collagen synthesis and heal. In order to do this, you're gonna to have to search around your house for a long item that can provide torque for a supination motion. Something like a bat or a golf club or a broom can work. Then you're gonna to wanna to stabilize your forearm and slowly supinate until you can get that strong muscle contraction. Adjust your grip up or down with the item that you're using in order to get that 70% contraction strength. You can either hold one position, for example, about a 45 degree angle for all 30 seconds, or you can slowly move between a few different positions, pausing for 10 seconds in each position. This is gonna do a much better job at stimulating that tendon to heal than any number of icing and stretching and mobilizations and other passive things you might've seen. Okay, so to summarize, 
If you have a tendon that you wanna strengthen, find the exercise that allows you to get a really strong muscle contraction and make that tendon work hard for 30 seconds. As that tendon slowly lengthens during that strong muscle contraction, it's gonna be a great stimulus for collagen synthesis. Make sure you're doing this consistently three times a week and often for at least four to eight weeks to really see the best results from this. Some other things that can help with tendon healing as well include getting enough vitamin C, especially in the morning, adequate protein intake, and maybe even taking a collagen specific supplement, and temporarily dialing back any irritating movements. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.